What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy and welcome back to another countdown video here on the channel and today we are counting down the top 10 cards from the most recent set Ultra Prism. So not too long ago we actually did do a set review for Ultra Prism, definitely go check that out, uh, link below in the description if you've not already seen it. Uh, but one thing I did mention is that I think this is actually one of the better sets we've had in a while, there's definitely a ton of cards uh, worth getting excited about in this set and just in general too I had kind of a hard time cramming everything I wanted to just within 10 spots so no shortage of new cards that are worth being excited about. And before we get too deep into the actual list itself, just want to set a couple ground rules. We are not going to be covering any reprints of cards that are already in the existing standard format. So things like the Solgaleo GX Secret Rare or Pokemon Fan Club, just as a few examples, uh, those will be ineligible to be on this list since they already exist in the current standard format, but other reprints that might not already be in the standard format uh, will be allowed. But let's hop into the actual countdown itself and see what made the cut. So before we get into the number 10 spot, we actually have one honorable mention. There's definitely plenty that could have taken this spot, but we're going to give a shout out to one card that didn't quite make the top 10 list, and that is going to be Palpad. So Palpad actually is a card that is a reprint, but again, not one of the ones that is in the current standard format. So Palpad, it's a new item card, or somewhat new item card, I should say, but you shuffle two supporter cards from your discard pile into your deck. So this is a new form of supporter recovery that we don't have right now, and supporter recovery in general is something I think we've been really hurting for. And, uh, you know, I think the lack of something like Versus Seeker or Palpad, just as an example, in the current format limits the use of certain supporters. You know, sometimes it's hard to really justify playing like one of tech supporters like your Acerolas or your Team Flare Grunts and stuff like that. You know, if you don't have a way to reuse them, because a lot of times you might just have to Ultra Ball them or Sycamore them away, and then you don't have access to them for the rest of the game, unless you're playing something else like Puzzle of Time. So Palpad finally gives us a decent way of getting supporters back into our deck. You know, sometimes you do have to Sycamore away. Sometimes some of those supporters you might not want to or ultra bomb away you know maybe getting rid of all your guzmas and things like that so palpad will allow us a way of actually effectively getting supporters back into the deck you know we do have lucimine in the current format but lucimine is a supporter itself so lucimine has not been the most effective way at recycling supporters outside of certain decks like sylveon as an example so palpad definitely a card that i welcome back into the format uh gives us like i said a more reliable way of supporting recovery than we've had uh, recently and like I said just didn't quite make the top 10 but definitely wanted to give it a shout out nonetheless coming in at the number 10 spot the first card we're going to talk about is Dawn Wings Necrozma GX so this is actually a card I've said a couple times I feel like it's actually a little bit underrated I think a lot of people in the community have been a little too hard on this card so the reason we are taking a look at this GX is for its ability invasion so once during your turn before you attack if this Pokemon is on your bench you may switch it with your active Pokemon so this is basically just the old ability that we had on Keldeo EX back in the day, also the same one that's on the Zoroark from Breakthrough, and this ability seems really simple, but it's so powerful. Keldeo EX in the past, you know, saw a ton of play just for this ability alone. There was actually at one point where Keldeo was being teched as a one of in almost every deck. Granted, at the time, uh, things like Hypnotoxic Laser were present in the format, but this ability just in general is so powerful, especially since we also have Float stone in the current format so if you slot down a float stone on your dongs wing or dawn wings necrozma basically everything on your board has free retreat at that point your opponent can no longer guzma stall you because you can just use invasion with that float stone attached to your dawn wings necrozma and then re retreat back into whoever that you want to attack with so that's why we are looking at this card it does have a couple attacks which actually aren't that bad but psychic acceleration is kind of lacking at the moment so we're just going to concentrate on this ability and i think this has a lot of potential i think out of all the current archetypes that are floating around Golisopod GX is probably the deck that most wants to abuse this just because first impression requires Golisopod to be on your bench and become your active Pokemon every turn you know to get that nice 90 damage damage boost so if you play a Dawnwings Necrozma in your deck you can basically make use of that every turn 
and to keep using first impression over and over and over. Also, a couple of other potential uses this card has is that it basically ensures that you always have the Guzma target that you want to promote whenever you play Guzma. So what I mean by that is Guzma lets you switch your Pokemon or your opponent's Pokemon with one of their bench. Similarly, you have to do the same. So sometimes it can sometimes force you to promote things you don't really want to and have to burn energy to retreat. But for example, if you have Dawn Wings Necrozma, you can use Invasion, go straight to the active spot, and then use Guzma to promote your attacker. Other little use that I don't think many people have talked about is Aqua Patch, since you can only accelerate energy to the Pokemon on your bench from the discard pile. So Dongling Links and Cosmic can also help with that. So definitely, I think a very, very powerful ability, and one that I think has been a little bit overlooked, but nevertheless, it does have that pesky dark weakness, which is why it's so low on this list. Honestly, if it did not have the dark weakness, this probably would take a slightly higher spot, but Zoroark GX has been insanely popular. So I think the weakness kind of hinders its placement on this countdown, but nevertheless, definitely a card I wanted to include on this list. Coming in at our number nine spot, we have our first non-GX of the countdown. That is going to be a new Empoleon. So one thing I'm really actually excited about from Ultra Prism is that it gave us a lot of very solid non-GX Pokemon uh, to potentially use, which doesn't happen too often. And Empoleon, I think, is definitely one of those cards. So the reason we're looking at Empoleon and the reason it's on this list is for its first attack, Total Command. So for a Water and Colorless, you do 20 times the amount of bench Pokemon and play both yours and your opponents. So this is nice because if both players have a full bench, you're hitting for 200 or of course 230 with a choice ban. And in the prior format, you know, Bridget has been kind of the go-to first turn supporter for almost every single deck. Every deck in the current format outside of maybe like one or two functions with a full bench and is eager to fill up their bench with tons of Pokemon. So with that in mind, Empoleon's total command attack actually looks fairly powerful. Like I said, it's also a non-GX. That means it only gives up one prize. And there's a couple of subtle things that I think really make Empoleon uh, more playable than it would have if things were just slightly different. So the first thing I mean by that is it has 160 hit points. The fact that it's 160 and not 150 is actually pretty big because that narrowly pushes Empoleon out of one hit knockout range for certain decks. So take for example Golisopod GX. You know that crossing cut GX hits for 150 so it's 10 short of knocking out an Empoleon. Uh, similarly for Gardevoir GX, Gardevoir attacks for damage in increments of 30, so 150 is what it would ideally want to hit for, but because this is 160 that will force Gardevoir decks to have another energy. Also Zoroark variants, even with a Professor Kukui, cannot knock out an Empoleon, they're only going to do 140 damage. So Empoleon's HP is actually really nice, and the other thing that it has going for it, it has Lightning Weakness. So a lot of water Pokemon are typically weak to grass, but luckily in the video game, Empoleon is part metal type, which means it's actually going to be resistant to grass Pokemon, which kind of forces the card to have a lightning weakness. And that's really important because things like Goliath's Pod GX have been so popular. Tapu Bulu GX has been popular. You know, we have the new Leafeon GX in this set, which looks to be a little bit hyped as well. So just a lot of things going on that really set up Empoleon, uh, you know, for success. But the big downside to it is that its attack is, you know, dependent on your opponent and they can potentially sometimes play around this attack. So that is the big downside to Empoleon is that it is it does not have a stable damage output, but nevertheless, definitely a very powerful non-GX and I think has some potential in this new format. So next up, we have another non-GX, and that is going to be the new Garchomp from Ultra Prism. So Garchomp is a new Stage 2 Pokemon, and the reason people are excited for this card is for this Royal Blades attack. For a Fighting Energy and two Colorless, you do 100 damage, but if you've played the new supporter card Cynthia from hand during this turn, the attack does 100 more. And luckily for us, this supporter Cynthia is actually a card that most decks want to play anyways, so the fact that Royal Blades requires you to play good cards in order to do more damage definitely is not a bad thing. But you know, on its own, I think Garchomp plus Cynthia, it looks okay. You know, you're doing 200, 230 of course with the choice band, but you know, it has kind of an awkward attack cost. Uh, the fighting in DCE is actually a little bit problematic, but luckily we have access to a couple of other tools that I think really help out Garchomp. So the first is the new Lucario from Ultra Prism. So this has perfect synergy with both of these other cards we've already mentioned, has this ability precognitive aura once during your turn before you attack. If you have Garchomp in play, you get to search your deck for any card and put it into your hand. So that means you can grab something 
something like Cynthia uh, to use to increase your Garchomp's damage output. Similarly, you could also grab a Choice Band or Energy or whatever you might need for your turn with this Lucario. So the fact that Garchomp has access to a good supporter card like Cynthia also has access to a great support Pokemon like Lucario kind of sets this archetype up to potentially be something. Now, of course, like I mentioned, it does have kind of an awkward attack cost to power up. You are also weak to fairy, which is terrible, but there are a couple of other things going on for Garchomp. There is a fighting one back from Breakpoint that you can use to power up your Pokemon. It has this attack Turbo Assault that lets you accelerate energy out of your discard pile. So that is one way to potentially recoup some energy if your Garchomps uh, do go down. And also, you know, we're looking a little bit ahead to the future, but it is worth mentioning there is a fighting type version of this Garchomp being released uh, potentially in our next Sun and Moon set. So that's another thing I think pushes this archetype you know, to being a little bit better than it would have. So Garchomp, like I said, it definitely has some challenges to overcome. That's why it's on a little bit of the lower end of this list, but definitely a card that has a lot going for it. And uh, you know, you might see it pop up and see some play. And coming in at the number seven spot, we have our first Prism Star card, which is going to be Cyrus Prism Star. So if you guys are unfamiliar with these new Prism Star cards, they are a new mechanic uh, that came out in Ultra Prism. And the ruling for them is that you can only have one Prism Star card of the same name in your deck, but they typically have very powerful effects, which Cyrus definitely does. So Cyrus, you can only play this card if your active Pokemon is a water or metal Pokemon. Then your opponent chooses two bench Pokemon and shuffles the rest of them and all cards attached to them back into their deck. So this is kind of like a parallel city on steroids, but as a supporter card. Now you guys might be thinking, you know, you have to have water or metal Pokemon in the active spot. That's kind of limiting. And though you're correct about that, that does limit Cyrus's use to only being in certain decks. Uh, there's definitely no shortage of good water and now good metal Pokemon to potentially abuse this supporter. So we have, for example, the new Glaceon GX that came out of Ultra Prism, which you will see uh, later on in this countdown as well. Uh, but definitely a very disruptive card and I think has some synergy with Cyrus. Also, plenty of new metal Pokemon got released in the set. We have the new Sogaleo Prism Star, Duskmane Necrozma, Magnezone, etc. So definitely lots of good metal Pokemon. Metal Pokemon seem to be on the rise in general, which bodes well for Cyrus. You also have the old Solgaleo GX from Sun and Moon base set uh, you could potentially play this with. Then there's, of course, all sorts of other existing water Pokemon that see play. So things like Alolan Ninetales GX also have Greninja, just as, as an example. Also, decks that play water support Pokemon like Octillery can abuse Cyrus. So, for example, if your opponent takes a knockout on you and you promote your Octillery that has a float stone on it, just as an example, you can play Cyrus even though it's just a support Pokemon, not your main attacker. So once you've used Cyrus, you can retreat out of the active spot and promote whoever you want to attack with, even if it's not a water or metal Pokemon at that point. So Cyrus definitely seems to be a very disruptive card and definitely a card I'm expecting to see some play. And that's why it's coming in at the number seven spot. And speaking of good playable metal Pokemon, like I just mentioned, we have Solgaleo Prism Star coming in at the number six spot. So yet again, this is a Prism Star card, which means you can only play one of these in your deck but that is okay, this Solgaleo should go the distance. It's a pretty powerful card. And the reason people are excited about it is for a few reasons. The first thing, it's a basic Pokemon with 160 hit points that only gives up one prize, which is very impressive on its own. You know, some EXs and GXs only have 160 hit points. Marshadow GX, as an example, is a basic that only has 150 and it gives up two prizes. So Solgaleo is a super tanky Pokemon. Uh, just for that fact alone, that already makes it pretty decent. But the reason this card is seeing some attention is for this Radiant Star attack. So for each of your opponent's Pokemon in play, attach a Metal Energy card from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way that you like. So this is a crazy form of energy acceleration. Actually reminds me a bit of Turtanator GX for its Nitro Tank GX attack. But Nitro Tank GX is so powerful, it's, it's only a GX move. You can only use it once per game. You can actually use Radiant Star multiple times uh, in a game if you have to. And this card just pairs so well with a number of cards that are already out and came out of Ultra Prism. So as far as older cards, Solgaleo GX has been begging for a card like this. You know, we've had, for example, the Rayquaza from Guardians Rising for a while, but even that has been a little bit underwhelming as far as its energy acceleration goes. Because with Solgaleo GX, you typically take two back-to-back 
EX or GX knockouts in the mid game with Sunsteel Strike. And then closing out your game can be very difficult because it's, quite frankly, pretty hard to power up another Solgaleo GX just with manual attachments. But thanks to the Solgaleo Prism Star, you can now easily accelerate a ton of energy out of your discard pile uh, at any given time. You just have to be careful about this though because if it does get knocked out, it does get sent to the Lost Zone, which means you cannot play things like Super Rod or Rescue Stretcher to get it back. But nevertheless, just being able to use this attack one time in a game is very powerful. And then also we have other new Pokemon that came out of Ultra Prism like Dustmane Necrozma, Dialga GX, uh, you know, we even have other existing metal Pokemon like Celesteela, Registeel, etc. So no shortage of great metal-based attackers uh, in the game to pair Solgaleo Prism Star with. So metal, like I said earlier, looks to be a type that is on the rise, and Solgaleo Prism Star is going to help out with that a lot. And here we have yet another metal Pokemon. We have Magnezone. This is definitely one of the other new big forms of metal energy acceleration. It's a new stage two Pokemon, actually very similar to the existing Magnezone that we have in format back from Breakthrough. But now you get to accelerate metal energy instead of lightning energies. So it has this ability, Magnetic Circuit, as often as you like during your turn before you attack me, attach a metal energy card from your hand to one of your Pokemon. So this is great because we've seen things in the past like Embor back from Black and White, Blastoise from Boundaries Cross, even Blastoise all the way back from Base Set had an ability very similar to this. So these abilities have historically been very playable and now that Magazone is around and we have all this metal support like the new Mount Coronet and all of the great new metal attackers like Dustman, the Krozma, uh, the Solgaleo Prism Star, Dog, GX, etc. There's definitely a lot going on for this card to potentially see play. Now, of course, we don't have access to things like Tropical Beach in the current format or effective ways to really get Magazone out and set up super quickly. It also only has a two retreat cost and not a three retreat cost, which means we can't play like a heavy ball type of engine, uh, similar to Tapa Bulu or uh, Solgaleo GX decks in the past. But nevertheless, this ability is very, very powerful. And like I said, historically, these abilities have been good in the past. So I would expect no different from Magazone as well. And up next, we have yet another metal Pokemon we've mentioned a few times. We have Dustmane Necrozma coming in at the number four spot. So Dustmane Necrozma is a new GX from Ultra Prism, has a whopping 190 hit points, so very tanky Pokemon just right off the bat. And the reason this card has been seeing attention is for its attack, Meteor Tempest. For three metal energy and a color rush, you do 220 and you discard three energy from this Pokemon. And at first glance, that might look a little bit underwhelming. You know, that's a lot of energy and you have to discard it every time you want to use it. So it doesn't seem that good initially, but look a little bit closer. We have a ton of great ways to actually support an attack like this. So we have, for example, the new Magnezone, which I just mentioned that lets us attach as many metal energies as we like, uh, you know, per turn. We have the new Solgaleo Prism Star. We even have things in the format like Registeel and Max Elixirs if you want to go more that route. But this attack is great because it knocks out basically everything that's relevant in the current format. You know, there's certain things that don't see a whole lot of play like Metagross GX and Solgaleo GX that have 250 hit points so Meteor Tempest will struggle to knock those out unless you have something like a choice band of course but this can basically just obliterate anything else the only other thing that really has a ton of hit points is going to be Gardevoir GX which is weak to metal so even though it has 230 hit points it doesn't even really matter since you're going to hit them for weakness regardless so this attack is incredible you're just going to blow anything away that gets in your path but also it's gx move is also pretty powerful as well so it has sun's eclipse gx for just three metal energy you do 250 but you can only use this attack if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent so this can sometimes be nice because if your opponent takes the first knockout and you, then you attack with Dustmane and Cosme, you can do Sun's Eclipse GX, 250 damage, taking basically a guaranteed knockout. And then you don't have to discard your energy for this attack. And next turn, you can attach a single metal energy and then use Meteor Tempest to take another knockout, ideally, of course, on a Pokemon GX or EX to get yourself two prizes. So Dustmane and Cosma is just a huge, tanky, a beat stick that's gonna blow away anything that gets in its path. So that's why it is so high up on this list. Alrighty guys, so we're starting to wind down on this countdown. So coming in at the number three spot, we have Alephion GX, which is actually probably one of my favorite cards that came out of this set, as you can probably guess from it being so high on this list. But just in general, I've really enjoyed this card. I really enjoyed the play style of it. And that's because it has this attack, Grand Bloom GX, for just a single grass energy 
for each of your bench basic Pokemon, you get a search deck for a card that evolves from them and just immediately evolve. So this is great because if you bridge it out a bunch of Pokemon on the first turn, you can just immediately use Grand Bloom, assuming you're going second, of course, and then immediately evolve on your first turn. But you also might be thinking, well, you're a stage one, so how are you going to do that? And that's because we also have access to the Energy Evolution EV. Uh, that came out in Sun Moon base set that lets you attach a basic energy to it and evolve into a Pokemon of the same type. So Leafeon is just a very fast way of getting your board set up. So there's plenty of Pokemon, you know, worth evolving in this way. So take something like Decidueye GX. You know, Decidueye is definitely a Pokemon you want multiple of and play for that Feather Arrow ability. So something like Leafeon can actually help you get out the Decidueyes a little bit quicker than the normal Rare Candy way because on your first turn, assuming you're going second, of course, like I said, you can bridge it out, three Rallet, and immediately evolve all of them into Dartrix, and on your second turn, you can just freely evolve into any Decidueyes without something like Rare Candy or having to go through some sort of extra step. Now, of course, there's all sorts of other Pokemon to potentially consider evolving in this fashion. We also have the Promo Lorantis, that increases the damage of grass and fire Pokemon by 20. So something like that is also an option for Leafeon. You can Grand Bloom GX out a ton of those Promo Lorantis and make your Leafeons hit for a large amount of damage. Since Leafeon has a half decent attack of its own for a grass and DCE, you're doing 110. So with a choice band and a bunch of those Promo Lorantis, you can start to hit for some crazy numbers that way. Also, we have another great grass Pokemon that's in the current format you guys are probably familiar with, and that's going to be Glycopod GX as well. So there's all sorts of Pokemon worth evolving. And one thing that's nice about Grand Bloom is that you're not even limited to just grass Pokemon. You can even evolve things like Zoruas into Zoroark GXs, which is actually a pretty important thing to be able to do. So lots of flexibility with this GX attack. Like I said, it has decent damage output. Solar Beam is going to basically two-shot everything in the current format. Most things have around 210 uh, hit points right now at the time of filming. So definitely a half decent attack uh, since you can power it up with just two energy attachments. And Leafeon GX also has a pretty solid ability as well. Breath of the Lees, if this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, once during your turn before you attack, you may heal 50 from one of your Pokemon that has any energy attached to it. So this gives your own Leafeons a little bit of tanking potential, but also if you have a Floatstone on your Leafeon, this gives you a great Guzma target to promote anytime you play Guzma, because you can force your Leafeon active, heal from maybe a different attacker, then retreat back into them and keep on putting on some pressure that way. So I think every aspect of Leafeon is just really solid. Solar Beam is an okay attack. That's probably the weakest aspect of this card. But like I said, even still, that attack can comfortably two-shot most of the things that are in the current format. So Leafeon, I just absolutely love this card. I'm actually probably a little biased because of how much I just enjoy the play style of this card, but definitely a card I wanted to include on this list, and that is why it's coming in at the number three spot. So next up, we have debatably the most hyped GX to come out of this set, and that is going to be another new evolution. That is going to be Glaceon GX. So similarly to Leafeon, has 200 hit points, 2 retreat cost, and is a pretty good card. <laughs> but let's look at the specifics. So it has this ability, Freezing Gaze. This is really why people are so excited. As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, your opponent's Pokemon EX and GX in their hand, discard, have no abilities except for Freezing Gaze. So this is insanely powerful, partially because of that energy evolution EV that we have in the format. So on the first turn, if you attach a water energy and you evolve straight into Glaceon, well, guess what? Your opponent suddenly can't Ultra Ball for Tapu Lele to, you know, get out that first turn Bridget or something like that. And if you look at the current format going into Ultra Prism, you know, that's kind of the ideal first turn play from every deck. Almost every deck goes for Ultra Ball. Tapu Lele GX, Bridget, and they start setting up their board that way. And Freezing Gaze kind of takes that away from your opponent. You know, I mean, there's plenty of other great abilities worth shutting off, but that is such a powerful thing. Limiting your opponent's stuff, maybe forcing your opponent to play more physical copies of supporters. You know, they can sometimes have a dead hand and might not be able to draw any cards without the help of something like a Tapu Lele. So Freezing Gaze, definitely very good for that. But also look at the other popular abilities we have in the current format. We have something like Trade on Zoroark GX, which has seemingly been in almost every deck as of recently. Uh, definitely an amazingly powerful ability worth shutting off other things like Lycanroc's Bloodthirsty Eyes have been floating around as well. So definitely no shortage of good abilities to shut off. But you know, Glaceon has a great ability, but it, it needs more than that if it needs to be a really great card. And luckily it has some solid attacks as well. 
So Frost Bullet for a Water and DCE does 90 damage and 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So with the Choice Band, you're hitting for 120, which two shots basically everything in the format. And this first attack actually has some synergy with its GX move as well, Polar Spear GX for a Water and Double Claro synergy. It does 50 times the amount of damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon. So what this means is, you know, if you hit your opponent with a Frost Bullet and they try to retreat into something else, let's say just another 200, 210 hit point, Stage 1 GX, which seem to be some of the most popular uh, recently, well, guess what? They've already taken 30 damage, which means they have around 180 hit points left. And now Polar Spear GX is going to hit for 150. So that means with a Choice Band, you can basically just wipe out a Pokemon that only has 30 hit points on them, which is pretty powerful. So the fact that Glaceon has some solid attacks to pair with this amazing ability is really what makes this card so, so good. There's all sorts of parts you potentially put it with. Zora Arc GX looks to be the main one. Also, there's been talk of Alolan Ninetales GX. There's, you know, like a quad Glaceon variant that focuses on things like energy denial and milling your opponent and just heavily disrupting them in that fashion. I've also seen people mention things like Lapras and weird stuff like that. So Glaceon definitely looks to be a card that's on a lot of people's radars and looks to have a pretty big impact uh, on this new Ultra Prism format in the early days. And so before we get to the number one spot, guys, we're just going to do a quick recap. Coming at number 10, we had Dawnwings Necrozma GX. At number nine, we had Empoleon. At eight, we had Garchomp. At seven, we had the new Cyrus Prism Star. At six, we had the new Solgaleo Prism Star. At five, we had Magazone. At four, we had Duskmane Necrozma GX. At three, we had Leafeon GX. And at two, we had Glaceon GX. So that leaves one card remaining. You guys can probably already guess what it is, and that is going to be Cynthia. So Cynthia is like by far and away my favorite card to come out of this set. If you've been watching this channel for some time, every time we do a set review and, you know, Pokemon prints some sort of like kind of mediocre shuffle draw supporter, you always hear me complain. Just quit with like Pokemon just needs to quit dancing around it and just reprint Professor Oak's new theory, that old supporter that had shuffle your hand into your deck and draw six. You know, they've tried things like Shauna. We've had things like Wick. Uh, even Ace Trainer, and just nothing really sticks, and they finally caved in and gave this card to us, which this format has been needing for some time. So Cynthia, like I said, it is going to be a reprint of that old card, Professor Oak's New Theory. Same effect, just with a different name. Shuffle your hand into your deck and draw six. And you might be thinking, well, we've had Shauna, that didn't really see much play, and it's only one card difference. Is that really that big of a deal? And I would say yes. And especially as the game has been shifting more and more into an evolution-based type of format and game over the past several Sun and Moon sets, the need for a card like this has just been growing more and more and more. So take, for example, Professor Sycamore, an extremely good form of draw power. Discard your hand, draw seven. You know, it's very, very good. But in evolution decks, there's typically a bunch of evolution pieces. You have things like rare candies in your deck. So a lot of times you can't play down your hand uh, before you use Professor Sycamore and you have to end up discarding resources that you really want to hold on to. And so the only other option that we had is to play N, which we have been. We've been maxing out our counts of N and, and Sycamore since there haven't been any other good draw supporters. But now that we finally have Cynthia, Evolution decks I think really have another great form of draw power that doesn't make them discard their resources, which is actually a pretty big deal, especially in this type of format where we don't have something like Versus Seeker to reuse our supporters or something like Junk Arm to fish out rare candies out of the discard pile. You know, Cynthia is just a great, great card for evolution decks and just even non-evolution decks. It's nice sometimes, you know, you might not want to discard your hand, but at the same time, your opponent might not have played many cards on their last turn and you don't want to play an N. And Cynthia is a great card for all these types of situations. So Cynthia, it's a really straightforward card, but definitely one of the most powerful cards to come out of Ultra Prism. Like I said, you know, I think it's good enough to take the number one spot, even above all these exciting new GXs like Dustman and Necrozma and Glaceon, and even some of these new Prism star cards just shuffle your hand and draw six it seems simple but this card is absolutely amazing it was actually easily my number one pick i actually started this list out with writing down cynthia at number one and trying to figure out everything else that would take the 10th or two spots on this list so that tells you how strong i think this card actually is and that's the reason why it is taking the top spot on this list 
But yeah, guys, that's going to be it for this countdown video. What do you think? Let me know below in the comment section. What are your favorite cards from Ultra Prison? Do you think I missed anything? Do you think I placed anything too high on this list? Definitely sound off below and let me know what you think. But as usual, guys, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you can support this channel by picking up something from our online store at rarecandytcg.com or by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg, it would mean a lot. But with that, I appreciate you watching and we'll see you for the next one.